So what's going on guys, Kids here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 4 best solo builds in Albion Online for PvP and PvE. So for each and every single build I will show you what abilities and armor you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and what is the best skill rotation that you want to use. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay so you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how much silver or how high or low your weapon levels are, you can easily use these builds and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first solo player build which is the Bow of Badan and we chose this weapon because it is one of the most powerful bows from all ranged weapons in the game and you will be able to do a crazy amount of damage for PvP and PvE. So if you are looking for one of the best bow builds as a solo player then this is the one for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon we want to go with the Bow of Badan. So then for your Q you pick the second option, then for your W pick the fourth option. And then lastly for your passive go with the piercing arrow which is the third option. Then moving over to the helmet and you want to use the Spectre's hood and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the cultist robe and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the boots go with the hunter's shoes and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your cape you pick the tetfer cape and then lastly for your consumables you want to go with the poison potions and pork omelette. But then if you specifically want to do solo fame farming then instead use cabbage soup. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out your abilities the best possible results. So for the first Q ability we have the deadly shot which shoots this arrow that can shoot through multiple enemies and each shot of course deals damage and you will decrease the enemy's damage resistance by 9 and it can stack up to 3 times. Then the second W skill is called the ray of light and this ability will fire an arrow in the sky which then lands and roots all enemies in 3 meter radius and then of course it does bunch of damage on top of all this. Then for the third skill we have the raging storm and this ability shoots an arrow that explodes into 5 meter radius and it leaves behind a big storm cloud that damages all enemies as long as they stand in the cloud and especially in pvp if the enemy is in the storm all of his spells get interrupted. Then for the R skill we have the levitate which makes your character do the simple animation and each second you channel this ability you will restore 7.5% health and gain damage resistance at the same time. So then going over to the next skill which is called the flash of insight and when you activate this ability it will reset your R skill. So basically by using this D skill we will be able to use our R skill two times in a row. And then lastly for our last skill we have the F ability called the refreshing sprint and when you activate it it will give you 80% speed boost and reduce your cooldowns by 33%. Then as far as your cape goes we are using the Tetfer cape. For every 15 seconds by auto attacking the enemy this cape will automatically activate and it will do a bunch of damage on top of everything else. So with all this said now let's move over to the rotation and PvE and PvP basically work the same way. So then for your rotation at the beginning of the fight you first of all want to use the W ability, then Q and then lastly finish it off with the E ability. Then from here we just use auto attacks while waiting for our cooldowns to come back up. So let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the W ability we will stun our enemies for 3 seconds. So then in those 3 seconds we want to use our Q spell and then right away the E ability. And then the Q spell will basically damage the enemy while decreasing their damage resistance. And then our E ability will do massive amounts of damage and as the enemy is stunned he won't be able to escape. And then after this we just use auto attacks. And then for our defenses we just mainly use our R ability and then as soon as we use it once we reset it by using the D skill and that's about it. So in my final conclusions if you are looking for one of the most fun and highest damage solo build in Albion then for sure check this one out and I hope you have fun. So then moving over to the second solo player build which is the spiked gauntlet and this is one of the new weapons that was just added in last Albion update. So if you are looking to change up your playstyle or you want to try out a brand new weapon with cool abilities and useful tools that will give you very high damage and fun playstyle then this is the build for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon we want to go with the spiked gauntlet. So for your Q you pick the second option, then for your W pick the first option. And then lastly for your passive go with the fatal fury which is the first option. Then for the helmet you want to use the assassin's hood and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the cleric robe and pick the third ability and first passive. 
Then for the boots, go with the royal sandals and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your cape, you pick the Tetfer cape. And then lastly, for your consumables, you want to go with the resistance potions and beefs too. But then again, if you want to specifically do only solo fame farming, then you want to instead use the poison potions and cabbage soup. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay, where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out your abilities the best possible results. So for the first Q spell, we have the Dragon Leap which leaps towards the enemy position while kicking all enemies in the way. This will deal damage and if you hit at least one enemy, you'll be able to use an uppercut which then deals additional damage and then you'll be able to throw the enemy in the air. So then for the second W skill we have the triple kick and this ability dashes towards the enemy possession while repeatedly kicking all targets, which deals damage and you can pull a single enemy player along with you. But like I said, this only works for other players. So then for the E ability, we have the Gravitational Collapse, which unleashes a powerful punch and it does a lot of damage and slows all enemies depending on what armor is the enemy wearing. And for PvE, this ability will count all mobs as a played user, so you will be able to deal the highest amount of damage straight away. So then moving over to the R skill which is called the Everlasting Spirit. And when activating this ability we will become immune to all damage. And if we get hit by the enemy while using this ability then we will extend our immunity for 3 seconds. And we will get a 20% damage increase on top of all this. Then the next ability is called the Meditation. And this ability lowers all of our cooldowns by 80% while channeling. So because of us using this skill we will be able to use our weapon skills a lot more often. And then for the last and final ability we have the Defenseless Rush. And this ability gives you 75% movement speed and plus 15% damage increase. While at the same time decreasing your defenses for 13%. So we only want to use this ability to run away or if we are about to deal a lot of damage. Then as far as your cape goes we are using the Death for cape. So every 15 seconds by auto attacking the enemy this will automatically activate. And it will do a bunch of damage on top of everything else. So with all this said now let's move over to the rotation that you want to use. So at the beginning of the fight we want to activate the F ability. Then we use the Q skill and then we use the E ability and then we finish it off with the W skill. Then from here we just want to activate our R ability and then straight away we want to channel the D skill. And then when the channeling is over we should have all of our weapon cooldowns back up. So then we repeat the same rotation and that's about it. So now let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the F ability we will gain 75% movement speed and plus 15% damage increase. So then we want to use the Q ability to do damage and get closer to the enemy. Enemy. Then we use the ability to do massive amounts of AoE damage and then we finish it off with our W skill. Then from here we just use both of our skills which is R plus D and the R skill will give us immunity to all damage while at the same time we will be channeling our cooldown reduction skill. So then by the time we are done with this we will get our main damage abilities back up and it's that simple. So then in a quick summary, if you are looking to play the new weapons which are the VAR gloves and you want to use the best solo player build, then for sure try this one out and I hope you have fun. So then going over to the third build which is the fire staff. And I chose this weapon because it is very high damage and with basically zero changes to our setup, we can use the solo build for PvP and PvE. So if you are looking for one of the best and most fun solo builds, then this is the one for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon, we want to go with the fire staff. So for your Q, you pick the first option, then for your W, pick the second option. And then lastly, for your passive, go with the aggressive caster, which is the third option. Then for your up hand, you want to go with the tome of spells. Then for the helmet, you want to go with the hunter's hood and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor, go with the cleric robe and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the boots, go with the guardian boots and pick the third ability and second passive. Then for the cape, pick the dead fur cape. And then lastly for your consumables you want to go with the healing potions and pork omelette. But then if you specifically want to do fame farming then instead you want to use cheap poison potions. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out for your abilities the best possible results. So for the first Q spell we have the fire bolt which shoots a bolt that will damage the enemy and at the same time he will get ignited which means that he will be taking a burning effect for the next 4 seconds and this can stack up to 5 times. So then for the second W skill we have the wall of flames and this ability creates a fireball that will set on fire all enemies that touches the wall. I personally really find this ability useful for PvP and PvE, but specifically for fame farming you can use any other W skill and it will do great damage as well. So for this skill we have a wide versatility to choose from. And then for the E ability we have the fire blast 
and this skill will shoot a massive ball of fire, which deals a lot of damage and the enemies again will be set on fire for 4 seconds. So then moving over to the R skill which is called the Everlasting Spirit. And when activating this ability we will become immune to all damage. And if we get hit by the enemy while using this ability then we will extend our immunity for 3 seconds. And we will get a 20% increased damage on top of all this. Then the next skill is called the Retaliate. And this ability will increase your damage resistance but at the same time you will reflect 70% of all enemy damage. So instead of you taking big damage he will damage himself. And then for the last and final F skill we have the giant ability. And when activating the spell it will make our character twice as big. And it will double our current HP for the next 8 seconds as well. So then as far as your cape goes we are using the Ted for cape. So every 15 seconds by auto attacking the enemy this cape will automatically activate. And it will do a bunch of damage on top of everything else. But as the fire staff basically almost never uses his auto attacks. So we will have to remember to auto attack the enemy once every 15 seconds. So with all this said now let's move over to the rotation that you want to use. So at the beginning of the fight we first of all want to hit the enemy with our Q skill. Then we use our E ability and then we want to use our Q ability again. Then if the enemy gets close to us or if we are fighting mobs then we place down the firewall aka the R ability. And then from here depending on the fight we either way save our defenses or use everlasting spirit. To become immune to all damage then we use the retaliate to reflect 70% of enemies damage and much more. So now with that said let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the Q ability we will do damage to the enemy and set him on fire. So then we use the E ability to do massive amounts of damage and set the enemy on fire again. Then now we want to spam our Q ability again as much as possible and we want to do this at least 4 times because it will activate our aggressive caster passive which will increase our casting speed but then besides that from here depending on the fight we use our defensive skills but mostly I would recommend to use the W skill for extra damage for fame farming or then save it if you are doing PvP and that's about it. So like I explained at the start this fire stab build is very cheap and beginner friendly because you only need to use your Q and E ability and then the rest abilities you can use whenever you want. This build has no stacks and no need for timing so as soon as your abilities come back up you can just use them and it's that simple. So then in a quick summary if you are looking to play one of the cheapest solo player builds in the game that is very powerful for pvp and pve then this is the build for you so good luck So then moving over to the last and final solo build which is the Kingmaker. And this build is mainly used for corrupted dungeons and PvP. But with few changes it can be useful for fame farming and open world as well. So if you are looking for the best solo PvP build then this is the one for you. So then moving over to the build and for the weapon we want to go with the Kingmaker. So for your Q you pick the second option then for your W pick the second option as well. And then lastly for your passive go with the heroic fighting which is the third option. Then for the helmet you want to use the guardian helmet and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the chest armor go with the assassin's jacket and pick the third ability and first passive. Then for the boots go with the demon boots and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for your cape you pick the tetfer cape. And then lastly for your consumables you want to go with the healing potions and beefs too. But then if you want to primarily go for fame farming then we want to change from healing potions to poison potions. Then for your assassin's jacket we want to go from the third ability to the second one. And then lastly for your weapon we want to choose the fourth W ability and that's about it. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out of your abilities the best possible results. So for the first Q ability we have the heroic cleave that swings your sword in 6 meter radius dealing bunch of damage and each hit it applies one stack which then can be useful for our E ability. And then on top of all this each stack will of course increase our movement and attack speed as well. So then for the second W skill we have the iron will and this ability increases our movement speed and defenses by 20% while at the same time applying another stack as well. So then for our E ability we have the Majestic Smash and this skill will sing your sword in 6 meter radius, dealing huge amount of damage and throwing all enemies in the air. But the damage depends on how many stacks you have, so we usually want to only use this ability after we have reached all 4 stacks. So then moving over to the next skill which is called the Ambush. And this is a simple ability that will give us invisibility for 8 seconds. So then for the next D skill we have the emergency shield. Which provides us with a shield that absorbs all damage based on our current HP. So if our health is below 40% we get 1.1k shield. 
or then if our health is above 40% HP, then we only get about 500 shield. And then for the last and final F skill we have the Vengeful Sprint and this ability will give us 20% speed and 4% damage increase for every 10% health that we are missing and this can stack up to 8 times and then as far as your cape goes we are using the Ted for cape so for every 15 seconds by auto attacking the enemy this cape will automatically activate and it will do a bunch of damage on top of everything else so with that said now let's move over to the best rotation that you want to use so at the beginning of the fight we first of all want to use the Q skill then activate the W skill and then now we want to use our Q ability two more times. Then when we have reached the four stacks, then now we want to finish it off by using our E ability. Then from here we just keep on using auto attacks and the Q and W as much as possible. And then by the second time we have reached the four stacks and when we have our E ability back up, then we first of all use the F ability and then we use the E skill. So let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the Q skill we gain one stack, then we activate the W skill which will give us the second stack and then we use our Q ability two more times to reach the full 4 stacks, so then we use our E ability for the highest damage possible. Then from here, while our E ability is on cooldown, we keep on using Q, W and auto attacks, and then by the second time we have our E ability back up, this time we first of all activate the F ability, because this time our health should be lower, so we will increase our damage and movement speed, so then we use our E ability and do massive amounts of damage. This weapon's main playstyle is to get to 4 stacks, then use the E ability and rinse and repeat. And then lastly, your R and D skills are defensive abilities. So use them when you're low health or depending on the fight and that's about it. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build. If you are looking for one of the most fun and best solo player PvP builds, then this is the one for you. So for sure, try this one out and I hope you have fun. And with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Albion online builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.